Hey guys, welcome to the Arzen channel. So I got the RGB 10 Max earlier on than most of the YouTubers on YouTube. But the thing is, uh, I had an issue with it. So my RGB 10 had Joy-Con drifting issues when I opened it up and I booted it up. I just noticed that it went all ham on the menu. And I just noticed, yeah, that's a Joy-Con drifting issue because this has Joy-Con analog sticks, which is uh, a bummer, kind of, because they're quite good. They're quite good when you're playing the game and it works fine. But once it starts drifting, it's absolutely out of control. I got a video that's about how to fix the Joy-Con drifting issue in the link in the description down below. So it is fixable, but it is kind of a con of this device already before I even reviewed it. So let's start the review. <laughs> If I already, maybe I deterred you guys already, but watch this video until the end, but because it's going to be interesting. What I got in the box is the device itself, the uh, user manual, and a USB Type-C cable. So let's take a look at the device and have my first impressions. Uh, right off the bat, I notice it's made out of soft plastic material, and it is prone to uh, getting a little bit dirty if you have sweaty hands. Uh, but that's not a big issue. And the branding of Pau Kitty is on the back, not on the front this time, which I like very much. The bezels are very small and the screen is like huge five inch screen, which is very nice. Let's talk about the face buttons. The face buttons feel like an RGB 10, which feel very good. Nobody ever complained about the face buttons with an RGB 10. Uh, the start and select and extra function buttons are very clicky. Uh, not really a problem because you don't use them a lot, but uh, I wish them to be a little bit more soft, to be honest, if I had to nitpick. And the analog sticks, I already ranted about the analog sticks, and you know what the analog sticks are all about. They're Nintendo Switch analog sticks. They feel good, but they have drifting issues at times. Uh, and I had to be very honest about that since I'm a reviewer, I have to be honest. And I could have said, no, that's not a problem. And the shoulder buttons, how do they feel? They feel good, but they're a little bit too close to each other. As you can see, they're stuck to each other. And for the rest, we have other buttons on the top. We have a volume buttons, like to control the volumes, and we have an SD card slot, as well as a OTG port for uh, dongles, uh, peripherals, and keyboards, gamepads, anything that has USB Type-C will plug into this, no problems. We have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the top, as well as a uh, DC 5 volt charging uh, port. I don't think this is OTG as well, like you have one OTG and one for charging only. So this is solely for charging. And we have a Wi-Fi on and off switch, which is very nice. And I noticed that if you turn it off and I boot my device, I got some kind of bug because it causes a kernel panic and emulate corrupts. Uh, but if I turn it back on, it just works fine. That's kind of weird, but that's what happened in my case. So we also have a reset button. I like that it's very small and not easy to reach to because you don't want to use these to, if you use them, you will corrupt your SD card and that's not what you want to have. So uh, we also have a power button and a sleep button. So this device has a sleep function, which is very nice. And on the bottom, we have two speaker grills but it is only a mono speaker, so it is firing from the left side, not from the right side. Uh, the speaker is only available on this side. This is just a, a for aesthetic purposes, I guess. It's, it's nothing. So uh, on the uh, left side or the right side, we have nothing. And on the other side, we have nothing as well. On the back, we have the logo and the battery capacity. The battery capacity is 4,200 milliamperes, so you're gonna get about eight to 10 hours out of this device. That's what they boast but I think you will get around six hours because the screen is not really that small. Now, before we get into the operating system, let's check out the SD card that came in the box. I opted for a 64 GB SD card and I hope, my hopes are crushed. <laughs> it is a non-reputable source SD card. It doesn't even have branding on it. It is just a class 10 micro SD card. I don't even know if it's class 10, might not even be one. Uh, it's 64 GB, oh, I'm sorry for that. That was a mess up on my end. Uh, but uh, I, I really recommend you to get a proper SD card because if you get one from a reputable source that's like SanDisk, Samsung, Toshiba, Lexar, and uh, all those kind of SD cards, with it, whichever you want to pick, but they have to be reputable because you don't want them to corrupt on you down the road and lose all your progress and save games. I don't care about ROMs. You know, ROMs is easy to put on there if you learn how to do that. But... Uh, the save games and what you have, your progress and stuff like that can be gone easily if you have a bad SD card. So I do recommend that you get a proper SD card and do that. If you just buy this device for plug and play purposes, 
yeah, then feel free to do so and rely on this SD card. But if you want this for the long run and really care about this device, then just get yourself a good SD card. That's what I propose. And now let's move on to our uh, Odroid Go Advance Super Clone, which is the uh, RGB 10 Max. And of course, what I know is that we're going to be greeted by the Heart Kernel logo because this is a ripoff. Yes, there you have the Heart Kernel logo, guys. It's a ripoff. That's it, but it is a better ripoff because it has it has clickable analog sticks, and uh, it has a better screen, an IPS display with which is OCA laminated, and it is uh, the bezels are smaller. I like it more generally, even though it has drifting issues. Let's take a look at the uh, games on here. Like that's the most important thing that a lot of people care about the amount of games on here. I'm sorry, Nintendo and other computer game manufacturers. This is going to be a part of the video that they don't like. Uh, where do we have more games? Here. Does it say what, how many games we have on there? It doesn't. So, now that I changed the theme, we can see that there are 10,659 games on there. That is a lot of games on a 64 GB card. Uh, so, yes, there's a lot of games on there for all kinds of systems. And you can uh, scroll through them using L2 and R2. It scrolls through them very quickly. And also, of course, the D-pad, but it will be very slow. Just use L2 and R2 to scroll through them very quickly. And after a while, it will switch over to alphabetic mode. So it goes through the alphabet and then it reaches the end. As you can see, like this, it goes alphabetically. And that's how that works. Uh, for the rest, uh, we also have box art and uh, videos that we preview the game. Uh, like this one not all games have box art and videos so that's something you have to know if you want to have more box art and videos you can scrape it using the scrape function you can scrape from different sources and also uh, check out if you want to have videos or screenshots only so 2d 3d all kinds of types of box art you can go for and then you can scrape if you have a wi-fi connection just if you want to connect to wi-fi just go over to network settings and then uh, go over to uh, Wi-Fi SSID, enable Wi-Fi, and then Wi-Fi key for your Wi-Fi connection. That is no problem. It is easy to do and very intuitive. Let's move on and talk about uh, what I don't like about what it, how it came out of the box. Uh, that is, uh, let's say some of the games comes with hacks. That's not a problem because they're, at least this time around, they are in a separate category for Game Boy hacks. And we have... Game Boy Advance, we do have uh, some naming issues here. So for example, we have, uh, let's give you an example. Zelda uh, Minish Cap is called uh, Zelda Legend 2 Shrink Cap. So that is not, uh, not proper and it is not in English, so it's in Chinese. A lot of these games are in Chinese, which is also a gripe of mine, so that's something you have to keep in mind. It's better to put your own ROMs on here than to rely on the ROMs that it came with. For the rest, we don't have anything special on here. Let's go into some gameplay and then call it a day with this. Now let's take a look at the hardware and specs on the side of the screen. They're also available in the description down below in case you didn't have a look at it long enough yet. Now let's take a look at the device and also take a look at the sound or listen to the sound. This is at its maximum volume. And let's take a look at the screen quality. If we do it like this, like check it from above it does not discolor it's a little bit hard to see through, uh, thanks to the reflection do it like this it's also reflecting a lot but uh, it's not discolorating take my word for it like this it's not discolorating not discolorating it's not washing out or anything very nice screen uh, it's not very bright that's something that i noticed it's not very bright its brightness is less than the rg 351 m and p that's what I noticed as well. And even less than the RGB 10, that's what I, I assume. But it is very nice nonetheless. The colors are very nice. I like it very much. 
And this is what I meant about the games being in Chinese. Uh, it's not easy to understand. It's not understandable for the English audiences. Uh, so you have to put your own ROMs on there anyways, if you wanted to understand what you're playing. So don't rely on the internal uh, ROMs. If you're Chinese already, shout out to you, but most of my viewers are not Chinese. I can't see that from the analytics. PSP works all right on this device. It, uh, in some games like God of War, it does not play at full speed, but uh, it does work better on different operating systems. That's something you need to know if the, uh, if the uh, progress in operating systems on the Super Android Super Go, uh, if the progress on the uh, operating systems on the Android Go Super uh, gets along, then we will get a lot better emulation on PSP in the future, I suppose. That's a rough guess, but it already works quite well for my likes. It's at 30 FPS for uh, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII at 1x uh, resolution. You can go into the settings using this button, by the way. And then you go over here. Then you can change the settings according to what you like. But that's it for PSP emulation. Let's move on to different uh, systems. So I did not get Dreamcast to work on this uh, iteration of Emu Alec, it is 4.1 and uh, on this device it just did not work for me uh, using the Flycast uh, core for RetroArch but uh, I'm pretty sure you can get it to work if you reflash it again with a different uh, operating system but right now it does not work in my case, I did a lot of things to try to get it to work but it did not work out. Uh, so I'll put some footage from other devices on here with the same chipset and same specs. So you can check it out. It's at 320 by 240 resolution, at minimum uh, resolution. And it runs quite well, but it is not perfect at all. So it has a lot of room for improvement using the uh, Retro Run uh, emulator, which is very be much better than this one. Uh, and that's very good for Dreamcast emulation. That's something you have to keep in mind. In the future, it will get better. Uh, so don't, don't worry about that. So PS1 emulation always works well on RK3326 chipset devices. So this device is not a slouch at all in PS1 emulation as well. So let's just move on and do some emulation. Let's put the volume down. That's too low. It has two uh, analog sticks so you can play uh, other games that use two analog sticks in PlayStation 1 games. Yeah, it works very well. This is PlayStation 1 emulation on RK3326 chipset device. It is perfect, pretty much. Let's move on to N64. Uh, we can do a lot of interesting stuff with RetroArch. We can also start uh, save states and stuff like that. We're just pressing these. Oh, this is the select button, by the way. So we do have a save state and load state thing. You can also turn on the fast forward function, but in N64 it's not that fast, so it will not go forward faster. Uh, the performance in N64 is not that great. It is okay in most games like uh, Mario Kart 64, but I always test more hard to play games to make sure that you guys know that it is not perfect and that you're not uh, misinformed about N64 emulation, but it is very playable, very playable at that. So I don't think GoldenEye 64 will be playable uh, very much, but this game, Zelda Majora's Mask Randomizer, is very playable. So that's something that is very nice for people who love N64 games. Game Boy Advance, the lovely child that everybody cares about. So uh, a lot of people worry about Game Boy Advance emulation, even though it, it will probably run very well on this device. So I'll just show it off quickly. It's in Chinese once again, I already ranted about that, so I don't need to talk about that again. But this device is very good for Game Boy Advance games. Yeah, it is very nice, the D-pad is nice, the face buttons are all very nice, and you'll have a good time playing platformers on this, as well as other games, of course, because the analog sticks are also working very well, except for the drifting issues. Shoulder buttons are easy to press, especially for Game Boy Advance, because you don't have to worry about mispressing your shoulder buttons. I told you they're uh, stuck together, so that's kind of the only gripe I have about the shoulder buttons.
it works very well. And I did not turn on any blurring or bilinear filtering, RGA scaling. I think this looks the best on here with just these per perfect pixels. It really looks nice because it's a high resolution screen as we saw in the uh, hardware and specs part of the video. Let's move on to some uh, CPS-3. So CPS-3 runs very well on this device. You can save states and load states. You can do a lot of things. The very nice thing about this is you don't need to press select and up and down anymore to control the volume, which is something that I appreciate very much that it has dedicated volume buttons. And I suck at this game, please forgive me. Yeah, I got that one in the bag. Even though it's just the first fight, I know it's the easiest. You can press select and X and then you have a nice PSP look-alike uh, menu for all kinds of things that you can reach for if you wanted to change the settings, if you wanted to uh, go on and save the settings over here, configuration file, and here change the inputs, uh, video settings, audio settings, input settings. You can change the controls if you want to swap L1, R1, stuff like that, whatever you want to do, or uh, enable the analog stick to duplicate your D-pad. Those are the kind of stuff you can do with this menu. Let's move on to my verdict and conclusion about this device. Now, the Odroid, I almost said Odroid Go Super, but this is an RGB 10 Max. Uh, it is a clone from the Odroid Go Super, and I really like it because it just took everything that the Odroid Go Super had a con about and made it a lot better, except for the drifting issues with the analog sticks because those are just, why don't they use a different analog sticks? I know Nintendo Switch analog sticks are all the hype these days, even though they drift. I don't know why the devices still use them and this is one thing that I just don't like about them. They're not even the modified version of the Nintendo Switch analog sticks. So uh, drifting issue, yeah, we talked about that. We said that it's not good, but for the rest, this device really hits the point with everything except the power of the device. I would have wished that this device was more powerful, but we have to wait for uh, Hard Kernel and Odroid to make a better device with a powerful chipset in there and then probably Pauki will decide to rip them off once again and make a better device. Out of that so i hope you guys like the video and like the rgb 10 max as well if you decide to get one check out the link in the description down below please like subscribe and support the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video